All right, so in this video, you're going to learn how to route water through a reservoir. So this is a reservoir, and we're going to use the level pool method. In class, we derived this equation, which we're going to use um, uh, herein. And as you can see in this slide, what we're routing the water through is a stormwater reservoir. So we're going to assume that that stormwater reservoir um, starts with um, zero water and zero outflow. So our um, S1 and uh, Q1 are, are both equal to zero. And what we know, and you can see on the slide, is that there is a, a storage outflow function, and that's on the bottom right hand side of the slide, and an input hydrograph. Now moving to the back to the light table, I've recreated this table here. So what, in general, what we're um, route doing is routing water. So this is a control volume with a change in, changing storage with an input and output um, function and signal. And we, we know a few things about this um, changing reservoir. We first know some time independent information. And so that's the storage out and outflow um, function. And so with changing head and um, changing um, uh, flow out, the storage changes. And from that, those changes in storage, um, we can calculate this 2s over delta t plus q, which becomes uh, quite important. It's important also to remember that we are working with uh, time periods in this problem of uh, 10 minutes. And as I said earlier, our um, s1 um, and q1 is equal to zero. The second thing we know about uh, the, the problem is our unit, our input hydrograph. So this is the water that's flowing in, the I in this uh, control volume here. So over um, four different time steps, which go from 0, 10, 20, and 30 minutes, we have different inflows. Again, um, just to keep it simple, 0, 10, 20, and 30 cubic feet per second coming into the reservoir during those times. So um, we, and the last point is we solved for this uh, column here um, using equation 9.2.3 in your textbook. So you can, if you'd like to practice solving for this 2s delta t over, or plus q, uh, it's uh, using that equation from your textbook. So coming back to our fundamental equation for the level pool method. This is the general equation. We can think of our uh, uh, a more specific equation for our first time step. So here we have our time step t is equal to t1. And for that time step, I'll just rewrite the equation. i1 plus i2 plus 2s1 over delta t minus q1 is equal to 2s2 over delta t plus q2. And just solving the, the left-hand side of this equation first, we have Given our information over here, we have for t of 1, we have i1 is 0 plus 10, that's our inflow at our second time step here, plus 2 times our storage at 0, which is equal to 0, so 2 times 0 over um, 10 minutes, minus q1, which is also 0. So our um, Left hand side here then is um, equal to um, 10 um, cubic feet per second. So, and we know um, that the left hand side is always equal to the right hand side, so we can um, assume then that this 2 cubic feet per second is equal to our right hand side here. So that's 2. S2 over delta T plus Q2. And 
then what we want to do is we want to um, calculate this and isolate this Q2 variable. And how we do that is by interpolating off of this storage outflow function. So I'll draw the graph and, and to be able to explain um, this type of interpolation that I'm doing here. So this is a graph here of the storage outflow function. We have our 2s delta um, over delta t plus q on the x-axis and then just our q on the, the y-axis. And from um, the graph here we know um, on, on the x-axis we are, are varying from 0 to 148 and on the y-axis we're similarly um, varying from 0 to 3. And we have some function here and we assume a linear interpolation of that function and we just solved over here for this, um, uh, this variable is equal to 10. So the first thing we want to do is just use linear interpolation from 10 to solve for our um, Q2 here. So uh, mathematically, um, how we can do that is just using rise over run um, multiplied by the, uh, by the run. So here we have, I'll just write this out quickly for the first time, rise over run multiplied by the, the run, which is equal to um, 3 minus 0 over 148 minus 0 multiplied by our 10 minus 0. And what we um, get when we get that, or what we solve for when we isolate this then, is Q2 is um, equal to 0 0.2 cubic feet per second. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and that's why I wanted to show you this on a light table. There's a little um, trickery that happens next. Um, we want to calculate the next time step. Um, and how we do that is um, from another equation that we reviewed in our notes. Um, so we want to calculate this next um, set of variables for the next time step. So we have 2s of j over delta t minus qj is equal to um, the same uh, first term, 2 sj delta t plus qj minus 2 qj. So I'll put this in the, the trickery category. Um, and because we know uh, a number of these uh, other terms. So what we're, um, what we're trying to solve for here is, is, is this um, set of terms uh, here. And we can do that by knowing that this first set of terms was 10 cubic feet per second. That's right here. And um, then our uh, 2 minus 2 um, uh, Q2 is, um, is right here, minus 2 times 0 0.2 CFS. So then we get what this term is equal to is 9.6 CFS. So we have our, our term for our next um, solution. So we have for time is equal to t point or t two.
So for the second time step, I've just written out the appropriate equation uh, of, the the, of the general version of the equation for T2. Um, and then um, done the same exact process to isolate for um, this term 2S3 for delta T plus Q3. Um, and we solve for that using the same workflow as here and have a result of um, 39.6. And then we do the same type of uh, linear interpolation for Q3 and using that linear interpolation you get final answer for Q3 of 0 0.8 cubic feet per second. So then all together you can practice on your own for solving Q2, Q3, and Q4 and more additional terms which are in your textbook.